Yesterday in San Francisco, Tom Wheeler, who is now the head of the CT Federal Communications Commission, had a very rude experience at the Commonwealth Club where several people interrupted his talk to ask him what he was going to do about cell phone standards because he's the head of the FCC now, appointed by President Obama. But you see, for 10 years, he was the head of the Cell Phone Industry Association when they did the $27 million study that found nothing. Now, cell phone standards, as I said, were developed to avoid heating a heavy set man, not a young child. And you see here the difference in scale of the child versus the man, the point being that the cell phone radiation reaches a larger proportion of the brain of a child, but also, according to studies conducted by the cell phone industry in France and in Switzerland, children's skull bone absorbs 10 times more radiation than adults. Why is this the case? A child's skull is thinner. The thinner the skull, the greater the radiation. A child's brain contains more fluid. The more fluid in an object, the faster it heats up in the microwave oven or anywhere else. Now, much of the energy from cell phone is absorbed by the brain cells in the frontal or temporal lobes. These are modeling done from our colleagues in Athens, Lucas Margaritis. These are data from Om Gandhi, who worked for years for Motorola. That work with Motorola ended the year he published these data, showing a very simple calculation that a child, a five-year-old, could absorb twice as much radiation as an adult. These are other data that he published, no longer working for Motorola, showing that the smaller the head, the greater the absorption of radiation. No surprise here, it makes sense. And yet, the size of the head for which all of the world's 6.5 billion cell phones is, are set today is that of a man who was over six feet tall and weighing well over 200 pounds, much larger than the average person in India or the average uh, young child in the world today, many of whom are using cell phones. Experiments with sperm that I'm going to show you here were produced in the following way. Sperm was taken from healthy men put into two test tubes, sperm from the same man. One test tube got exposed to cell phone radiation. The other test tube did not. It's a very clear study. This one now was done in Australia at their National Center for Research on Male Health, uh, which is led by a Cambridge University andrologist, Sir John Aitken. And what he showed is that the cell phone exposed sperm die three times faster than the control sperm that are not exposed. Now, of course, all sperm will die in a test tube after a while. And you can measure motility of sperm, how well they swim. And in terms of motility measurements, they found that, again, the sperm that were the poorest swimmers were those that were exposed to cell phone radiation. And there's a measure of uh, vitality of mitochondria of DNA, which are the engines of the cell. The mitochondria is the engine that gives the cell energy to move in the case of sperm. And mitochondrial DNA of sperm were also damaged three times more if they were exposed to cell phone radiation, indicated here and here. So clearly, cell phone radiation damages sperm. And in his uh, Statistics and Medicine Textbook, I th Edition 7, Professor Stanton Glantz of the University of California, San Francisco, has concluded, based on the data that he's amassed, that cell phone radiation clearly damages sperm count as well as sperm quality. Now, another study was done at the Cleveland Clinic by Ashok Agarwal, a very distinguished expert in the field and the director of the Cleveland Clinic's uh, infertility clinic. He noticed that men coming for treatment of infertility seemed to be wearing, as I used to, a lot of these devices at their hips. And he did a simple cross-sectional survey. And he found that the men who use phones the most, 
or kept them in their pockets the longest, had the lowest sperm count. This study was published in 2008. In 2008, he was able to see that tw about 20% of men had kept phones in their pocket four hours a day. Now, of course, the numbers are much greater. And by the way, we do not have all of the answers for why sperm count has falling. Certainly, the, the information Elizabeth Grossman shared with you this morning is relevant because we know a number of petrochemicals, lipophilic organochlorines, can interfere with sperm count. Those studies had been done in highly exposed workers, for example, pesticide workers. But one of the factors that can affect sperm count clearly is cell phone radiation.